Uh, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yashong. I came from Nyon Technology University. And this work called Precise Power Delay Profiling with Commodity Wi-Fi is a co-work with my colleague Zhen Jiangli and my supervisor Mo Li. Okay, let's get started. And nowadays, Wi-Fi communication is becoming sensing at the same time. When we look at one piece of wireless signal transmitted at time point T0, this signal will be reflected by the objects in the environment and be received at the receiver. If we analyzing the received signal, we can estimate the power intensity, of, power intensity and the time delay of each individual signal copy. And we can get such a profile of the wireless channel called power delay profile. From this profile, we can actually extract some information, a very useful information from of the environment. For example, we may estimate that there are three objects in the environment because we can receive four copies of the original signal. And one copy is coming from the direct path. But this is not always true when we are uh, using Wi-Fi because power delay profile has its resolution. In this, in this power delay profile, we divide the time dimension into a lot of beams. And the width of each beam is the resolution of the power delay profile. When we look at these two signals, they are coming from the human and coming from the wall, they arrive within the same beam. So these two signals will added together, and the power intensity of the aggregated signal will be estimated by the power delay profile and then output it. So from this power delay profile, we actually can only get three, maybe three copies of the original signal and some information is lost during the aggregation. And if we could double the resolution of the power delay profile, no information is lost uh, on this power delay profile. So if we want to sense the environment feeding world uh, more precisely, we want a high resolution power delay profile. According to the theory that the resolution of power delay profile is actually determined by the signal bandwidth. The wider the bandwidth, the higher the resolution. But so if we want to sense the feeding world very accurately, we want to transmit a signal with very wide bandwidth. But this is, this is not always possible in using commodity Wi-Fi because the channel bandwidth of the commodity Wi-Fi is regulated by the protocol. We cannot change it freely. And what makes things worse is that the resolution of the power deal profile we get from uh, commodity Wi-Fi is far from enough. So in this paper, we, we are asking that, can we do better than this without changing the protocol and without changing the existing Wi-Fi infrastructure? Our answer is positive in, this in our work because we found that even though the signal bandwidth of a single channel is limited, but the total frequency, band, uh, total frequency allocated for Wi-Fi is much wider. If we can fully utilize all those frequency resources allocated for Wi-Fi, we get the chance to increase the resolution of power delay profile significantly. So in this, in, uh, we build a system called Splicer. The goal, of the, the goal of the Splicer is to break in the bandwidth limit of commodity Wi-Fi and uh, derive a high resolution power delay profile. So, before we dive into the detail of our, of our system, let me first introduce how can we get such a power delay profile from the commodity Wi-Fi. Actually, it is, of course, it's not directly available from the commodity Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi cards will report the channel state information, which is actually a frequency domain channel characterization of the wireless channel. And we can then uh, derive the power delay profile, the time domain power delay profile from the CSI wire IFFT transformation. We wanted to emphasize here is that the channel state information actually covers the same bandwidth as the original signal. So here, to get a high resolution power delay profile actually equals to obtain a high, a wide band CSI. So our idea is to uh, transmitting over each channel and measure the CSI sequentially. For example, we transmit signal over the first channel and get the CSI like this, 
and then get a transmitting thing over the second, get CSI like this, and sequentially. And after we got all those three CSIs, we combine them in the frequency domain and derive a power DA profile from this wideband CSI. And specifically, since we increase the bandwidth three times than a single Wi-Fi channel, we will observe a three times resolution enhancement of the power DA profile. But when we try, but when we try to implement this system on commodity Wi-Fi, we met several challenges. The first one is the errors, because we found that we found that the CSI reported by the commodity Wi-Fi is not accurate. Without removing those errors, we cannot combine the CSI in the frequency domain. The second challenge is that uh, when we collect the CSI from multiple channels, we assume that the channel is, uh, is relatively stable, but the channel is always changing. So it imposes a constraint on, the, on our CSI collection behavior. Therefore, we have a timing requirement for our CSI collection. So let's look at the CSI measurement error. To understand the error contained in CSI, we did some preliminary experiment. In our experiment, we're using uh, a Cirrus 9580 uh, Wi-Fi cars, and we collect five CSIs from each individual channel, and we measure the CSI from 10 continuous channels in 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, CSI contains, since CSI contains two parts, we look at the amplitude part first, and this figure Shows the, uh, shows the amplitude measured in dB level. And these, these curves are from, uh, measured from the first channel. And then the second channel, third channel, and so on and so forth. From this figure, you can see that the amplitude of CSI it matches our expectation. So we can directly combine combining them together. But when we look at the phase of the CSI, it looks um, appears to be random and looks very ugly. So without removing the error contained in those phase measurements, we are not able to directly splice them together. In order to know the, how can we remove the phase error, we need to know how those errors are introduced to the CSI measurements. Actually, when a piece of wireless signal is transmitted to the receiver, the wireless channel will change the phase of the received signal, of the original signal. So the received signal it has different phase with the original signal. And the phase difference is actually the phase value of the CSI. But before we can compare the, these two pieces of signal, we, this signal must be decoded by the physical layer first. So this signal will be sampled by the ADC at the receiver side. But you can imagine that the sampling frequency of the ADC at the receiver side and the uh, DAC at the sender side cannot be exactly the same. And this sampling frequency offset will change the, the phase of the received signal also. And uh, we denote the phase change as lambda O. This phase change is decided, the value of the lambda O is decided by the sampling frequency offset. And after that, the physical layer will use a packet detector to detect the start point of the packet. But the start point cannot be exactly located. There will always be a shift between the real start point and the detected one. And this shift will also change the phase, uh, phase of the received signal. We denote the, denote, it as the, denote the phase change as lambda b, which is decided by the uh, packet boundary shift. And after that, the physical layer will use a carrier frequency offset corrector to correct the carrier frequency between the sender and the receiver. But this corrector is, is not perfect. We can still uh, observe a lot of residue carrier frequency offset in the received signal. And this offset will also change the uh, phase of the received signal. So we denote that, uh, denote that phase change as beta. And after all those components, the, the, the received signal will be sent to the channel estimator. And uh, the phase change will be estimated here and uh, uploaded to the up layer. So here, I want, what I want to emphasize is that the phase of the CSI actually contains two parts. 
The first part is contributed by the wireless channel, and the second part is contributed by the hardware. And we want to accurately estimate the phase change caused by the channel and eliminate the uh, phase change caused by the hardware. And the, actually, the reported CSI phase value can be represented using this equation. This theta k is actually the uh, phase change caused by the uh, wireless channel. And the other parts are, caused, are introduced by the hardware. And uh, this one is the reported CSI phase by the commodity Wi-Fi devices. So in order to get the real value of the theta k, we will look at each component individually. And we look, first look at the phase error beta, which is caused by the residue central frequency offset. And our observation is that it actually has no impact on the derived power delay profile. So we actually don't need to know the exact value of the beta. It is the same if we can estimate the theta plus beta. So we use gamma to represent this value. And now I drop turns to estimate the gamma. After that, we look at the packet detector uh, uh, lambda b, which is caused by the packet boundary detection. And from our experiment, we observed that it follows a Gaussian zero mean Gaussian distribution. So our solution is to remove it by averaging because its mean is zero, assumed to be zero. So if we can collect multiple CSIs on the same channel and averaging them together, we will remove the impact of the uh, lambda b. So the problem now is termed to uh, is reduced to this version, and only the phase error lambda O is left. And after that, we will look at the phase error of the lambda O. This one is caused by the sampling frequency offset. And the sampling frequency offset is stable during the order of minutes or even hours. So this one is actually a constant across multiple CSI measurements and even across different CSI from different channels. So based on that, we actually propose a heuristic to estimate the, uh, to find the best value of the, to find the exact value of lambda O. Our observation for the heuristic is that when we use Wi-Fi signal of different channel to sense the physical world, we should get exactly the same positive profile because the physical world is actually the same. But due to the phase error, lambda O contained in the CSI, the positive profile will be different. So we, we propose an algorithm to search for the best value of lambda O. If we find the correct value of lambda O, it will maximize the similarity between the power data profile derived from different channels, just like this figure shows. And we will, get, we, will estimate, we will identify that the lambda O is here because it maximizes the similarity. So till now, I have finished actually our phase error correction. And let's look at our second challenge, which is the timing requirements. We have such, timing, such a timing requirement because we assume that during during the CSI collection, the channel is stable, but the channel is always changing. So, uh, and we can use a channel coherence time to estimate the time interval during which the channel is stable. So all of those impose a constraint on our CSI collection behavior that we must finish one round of CSI collection within the time uh, coherence time. However, on the other hand, we needed to collect multiple CSIs on each individual channel to correct the phase error. So, and we, if we collect more CSIs, the phase error correction will become more high quality. But the problem is that if we collect one, multiple CSIs on one channel, we may not have enough time for the rest of the channels. So it has a trade-off here. That it has a trade-off between the error correction uh, quality and the total bandwidth we can scan. And we formulate it as an optimization problem. By solving this problem, we can get a scheduling on how, how many CSIs should be collected on each individual channel. And the detail of this problem, you can refer to our paper. So after all those, uh, after all, uh, generally that's our design. And next, I want to give you some empirical evaluation of our system. 
And uh, in our experiment, we use uh, commodity Wi-Fi routers, which is equipped with a um, 9580 Wi-Fi NIC cards. And we modify the driver of the Linux system running on the, uh, on the, on the Wi-Fi router to let the Wi-Fi cards report CSI value for each individual subcarrier. And we conduct our experiment in four kinds of different scenarios. Uh, as we know that we can use power data profile to do the ranging because we can extract the energy of the direct pass from the power data profile and with pass loss model, we can estimate the distance between the sender and the receiver. And theoretically, the high resolution power data profile will give us a more accurate ranging result. So therefore, in this paper, we will use the ranging error as our metric to evaluate the correctness and effectiveness of our high resolution power data profile. The first, the first experiment we conduct is to evaluate, to verify the correctness of our phase error correction. To do that, we do the ranging using three different versions of, of CSI. The first version is the raw CSI without any correction, and the second one is the CSI after uh, a part of the error correction. And the third version is the CSI with the full version of error correction. And here is the result. You can see that it, here is the CDF of the ranging result, ranging error. You can see that uh, without any error correction, the ranging error is about 10 meters, and it could be reduced to 6 meters if we remove the phase error of lambda b, and it could be further reduced to 4 meters after we remove the, all those phase errors. And then the second experiment we want to conduct is to evaluate the effectiveness of a high resolution power data profile. To do that, we uh, do the ranging using CSI with different bandwidths. And this figure shows the ranging error of the uh, CDF of the ranging error using different bandwidths. And you could see that if we use 102, 120 megahertz, it can outperform a single channel by more than 20%. And if we use uh, 200 megahertz, they will outperform uh, one, one single channel by more than 50%. And after that, we also uh, conduct a case study to evaluate our end-to-end -end performance. In this case study, we, uh, we, we use the indoor localization as, our, uh, as uh, one example to show the performance. Actually, there is an indoor localization system called Cupid, which is a single AP indoor localization system. In, this, in Cupid, it will use the power data profile to estimate the distance between the sender and the receiver, and it will use music to estimate the angle of arrival. Uh, this one is out of the scope of this talk. And uh, in our experiment, we replace the input by our high resolution power data profile and leave the rest of the system unchanged. And uh, here we got the result for the localization error. From this one, you can see that uh, the localization error for the original qubit is more than seven meters, and it could be reduced to two meters with the help of a splicer. And it could be further reduced to less than one meters if we are able to use multiple access points. So it demonstrates that, from this experiment, it demonstrates that our splicer can immediately have a lot of applications which use power data profile as input. So in conclusion, we, uh, we build a system called Splicer, which is a system that can derive precise power data profile from commodity Wi-Fi devices. And it leverages the CSIs from uh, e individual channel and from uh, equivalent wideband CSI. And it could benefit uh, massive applications based on power data profile or CSI. Uh, that's all. Thanks for your attention. And I would like to take any questions.